Hey folks, uh, confidence intervals and margins of errors. This is actually going to be part one. I'm going to do one more little piece to this uh, um, uh, the next day. So put part one on there, okay? And then the students often ask, can we tear the pages out? I'm going to say no on this one. You're going to just be uh, doing writing some numbers down and stuff anyway. So there's no graphs or anything we have to worry about, okay? So here we go. So how can we calculate a confidence interval and a margin of error? for population proportions and population means. Okay, here we go. So confidence intervals for population proportions and means. So a C percent confidence interval for the proportion P of successes in a population is given by, okay, don't let that formula scares you right here. Um, I'll talk about all this. So P hat, you guys, this is what this is called. This says P hat. P hat is your sample proportion. P is your population proportion. Usually we don't know what that is, so we're gonna we know how to calculate a, a, a sample proportion. N is our sample size, and and our z score, our z for our z sub c for our confidence interval. It depends on your desired degree of confidence. Okay, so these conditions must be met for uh, proportion intervals. So there's only two possible outcomes: success or failure, or on or off, or uh, it works or doesn't work. You know, there's only two outcomes. And n p hat and n times 1 minus p hat must both be uh, at least 10. And the sample size, um, I'm sorry, the size of your population has to be at least 10 times that of your sample size. Okay, so, and also the samples have to be random. Okay, so here's our z-score tables uh, that we're going to use, our z-scores for we're going to use for our confidence. So if we want a 90% confidence, we use the z-value 1.645. Remember, remember we did a few days ago, uh, 68, 95, 99.7 rule. That stood for one, two, three standard deviations away. Well, this is a little bit more accurate. It's not at two right there. There goes my copy. Um, so it's actually 1.96 is a 95% confidence interval. Don't let that worry you guys. Is it, don't, I'm trying not to be confusing here. So if we have a 90% confidence interval, the Z that goes next to the radical, we put in there. If it's 95, we put that there. If it's 99, we put that there, okay? All right, so in a random sample of 104-year-old children in the United States, 76 were able to write their name. Okay, so this is P hat, 76 out of 100, which is 0.76. Find the specific confidence interval for the proportion P, which is our population proportions, uh, of four-year-olds in the U.S. who can write their name, okay? So they want us to find a 95% confidence interval, okay? So we got to get P hat. P hat is 76 out of 100 right here. Okay, let's do that real quick, okay? So there's P hat, and then our confidence, our degree of confidence, since we're doing a 90, what was it, 95%, we're going to use 1.96. That's what goes right here and right here, okay? And then 0.76 goes here, here, and then the difference, 1 minus 0.76 is 0.24. That's what goes in here, okay? So what we're going to do is just do this value right here, all right, I wish I'd have typed it down. I just ran out of time, you guys. And Anyway, so our Z is going to be the 1.96, and N is 100 because that's that right there. So let's just plug it in right there, okay? So I didn't uh, type it up, you guys, so um, I just typed up the next answer. So how we do this in the calculator is, now these are the same. These two are the same. We're either subtracting for this side or we're adding for this side with our p hat okay this is our p hat right there so let's let's do this 0.76 in the calculator 0.76 times 0.24 make sure you hit equal so i have for this right here 0.1824 now i'm going to divide it by 100 so divided by 100 and i have 0 0.001824 now I'm going to square root that. So I'm going to my calculator the square root is in the second function feature. So now I'm going to go second function square root and I have 0 0.0427 with some change. Okay? So that's all of this. Now I'm going to multiply it times 1.96 times 1.96. So I get about 0 0.08, okay? 0 0.083708. So now we'll round it to 0 0.08. So this would be, so this is 0 0.08, this is 0 0.08, so 0 0.76 minus 0 0.08, 
will give us um, uh, about 68%, and then 0.76 plus 0 0.08 is 0.84. All right, always make an interpretation of the context of the problem. And so how we would interpret this is with 95% confidence, the proportion of all four-year-olds in the United States who can write their name lies between 68% and 84%. All right, let's do the same problem, but with a 99%. So that just changes our z-score to uh, uh, the 2.576. Okay, that z-score was this guy right here. So 99% is 2.576. Everything else is the same, okay? So we plug that in, and we should get about that right there. Okay, and again, we do this times this and equals and then divided by 100 equals and then square root that equals and then times this number equals. Okay, so it looks like you get about a, a 0 0.07, I think, you guys. So, um, uh, no, 0 0.09, sorry. This is about 0 0.09. So when you add 0 0.76 uh, plus 0 0.09, or maybe it's 0 0.11, sorry. <laughs> just trying to think ahead for us but anyways uh, crank that out and you get that right there and always interpret that my uh, microwaves nagging at me to open it up anyway so the interpretation is with 99 percent confidence the proportion of all four-year-olds in the u.s who can write their names lies between 65 percent and 87 percent all right so a confidence interval for the mean the population mean which is mu mu is always our population mean and the normally distributed uh, distribution, sorry, is given by this uh, formula right here. Okay, so we use the same z-scores depending on if it's 90, 95, or 99. Okay, and those are the most common ones we use, you guys. You could do an 85%, but those, they, th those aren't as common. 90, 95, actually 95 is probably the most common, but 99 is, is common also. Okay, so that's what goes right here. They'll give you the standard deviation. Uh, if they give you everything, you just got to plug it in. So, so X bar is our sample mean, N is our sample size, and then um, Sigma is our population standard deviation, and, and the Z score depends on your desired degree of confidence. Okay, so here we go. In a random sample of 20 students at a large high school, the mean score on a standardized test, so this is X bar, is 610. Okay, this is N right here. Given the standard deviation of all scores is 120, Find a 99% confidence interval, so that's the z-score of 2.576, okay, for the mean score of all students in the school, okay, so here we go. We're going to plug that in, plug it all right in right there, and then what I would do on this, I would do, and I did this in class today, 120 divided by, and then you hit 20 square root, and then you got to hit equals, and that'll give you the decimal of 120 divided by the square root of that. Then multiply it times that. And that's the decimal that we're going to do uh, add and subtract from the sample mean of 610. So we get about that. Of course, make an interpretation. So with a 99% confidence, one last time, the mean uh, score among all students would lie between 541 and 679. Okay, if you are in my class, that would be your assignment. Take care.